my initial journey with cardboard was working on the streets. I was painting on it because it was I couldn't afford canvases, so I was mm. painting on bits of found cardboard. I had a day job as a designer. Every day, someone would be behind my shoulder telling me what to do, how to make this, how to do that. At the end of each day, I just let off that tension of wanting to make something for myself, so I'd just be painting mm. and leaving it on the streets. Before this show, I, the past few years, I was working in kind of a materialism sense, where it was using different materials like chrome and perspex and throwing it all into the mix. I'm a, I'm a keen fan of the new kind of uh, perjurance theory, mm. where time is constant, but an object exists continuously, but within its lifespan of time, it's sometimes more visible than other periods, or it disappears at some points mm. or reappears. It's a difficult thing to do, to depict time. But something that you do very well, I think, your work does very well, is just kind of stretch a moment just to the point where it might break and without letting it recoil. Basically trying to kind of capture an object or a composition within the concepts of time and space. The viewer is the catalyst as he moves from left to right or backwards and forwards where depending on the position the painting reacts to the viewer's um, whereabouts. You've gone back to using cardboard again but in a, a dimensionalist um, under a dimensionless code. You kind of um, poeticise in a kind of wry way this, uh, with this monumental Matisse-like kind of uh, cardboard nude on the beach, taking a selfie, and then within the, within the screen you've done a little kind of miniature Adam Neat. Instead of the traditional two-point perspective of the foreground and the background, I want to mm. overlap the background with the foreground where you're breaking down the background forms into kind of simplified colours and shapes to represent space and form in relation to the foreground where it's more detail and colour and painterly. I would paint screaming heads till the cows come home. I just want to do that all day long, really. But I know, <laughs> as an artist, you have to push yourself. If you find yourself repeating yourself, it's not worth doing, for me personally. You've got to have that torment with what you're doing to resolve it, to get to the other side where you, you battle and you win or you, you learn something or you answer a question within what you're doing. We start off with questions, you try and answer them within the work. 